I hate guys. I love women. This video was sponsored by Audible. So Audible's been teaming up with a slew of hip-hop artists to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the genre, including DJ Drama for his Gangsta Grills podcast, an exploration into the concept of what a mixtape really is, with Drama breaking down how certain characteristics still distinguish the mixtape from a normal album. As well, he interviews several rappers whose mixtapes he's hosted along the way, and because of his familiarity with them, he's able to get the kinds of stories and details you wouldn't normally get elsewhere. So text code GRILLS to 500-500 or go to audible.com slash grills for a free 30-day trial, and check it out yourself. What up, y'all? Rap Critic here, and this was a Patreon-voted episode. And if you'd like to vote on the next episode, plus enjoy a bunch of other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash rapcritic. So, can I talk a second about how I want to like Lil Uzi Vert? Because uh, between the satanic imagery that pisses off the Puritans and the cool punk aesthetic he carries that promises the music of an ambitious weirdo, I keep feeling like I'm supposed to be on board with this guy. But every time I try to actually sink my teeth into a song, it always feels like a step down from what I expected. Their earlier stuff kept feeling like I was about to be sucked into a strange world with unconventional rap production and psychedelic rhymes, but too often it felt like they got lost in the sauce and just started fucking around and just saying whatever, so none of the songs or concepts really, for me, felt like the magnetic experience I've been told their music music is supposed to be. But you know what? I figured all that was going to change with a little number called Just Wanna Rock. And I do mean a little number too. Uh, the thing barely went past the two minute mark, but it was an undeniable cherry bomb of a banger that Penguin shimmied its way up the charts as soon as it caught wind. And sure, they barely said anything in it, but it, it was so to the point with what they were trying to do, they didn't need to. Dude just wanted to rock, and rock they did. And for such an invigorating blast of energy, unlike anything he had released before, I'll be damned, they had me again. Then I actually took a listen to the new album to see if a new leaf was turned, and the shit was the definition of mid. Nothing but lazy pop hooks, a half-finished system of a down cover for some reason, and just any and all interesting or unique musical angles he hints at going for just sanded down by his refusal to actually commit to any of it. Guys, I can't believe I'm in the reality where I have to say the following sentence here, but it's true. Lil Yachty put out a more artistically respectable album this year. That album took risks, it had a lot of fun, and even if you didn't like it all, you can't front that there were definitely some solid tunes on there. With Uzi's LP, I keep hearing stuff that was almost engaging or subversive, but nothing with enough focus put into it to really take it all the way home. One of the things that kept throwing me off is their weirdly basic bitch attitude about shit despite trying to put on this air of being an eccentric, complex person. Like, just to be frank, this is the first line they say on their new album. Like, whoa, try to sound less insecure, bro. I mean, I can't believe this. Lou Uzi Vert seems like the true modern rapper, an artist in the mainstream hip-hop game going by they-them pronouns, and is most definitely not afraid to question the fashion choices that heterosexual men are assumed to wear. I ain't been gay, though. I mean, would you hear that? Matter of fact, I, I fuck like eight girls a day, so that, that's how not gay I am. I hate guys. I love women. So by the time I got to today's single, Endless Fashion, apparently one of the hit songs from this new album, I was left more frustrated than ever. Starting with the most aggravating thing that happens when the song starts, the sample. Uzi. Yeah. I mean, can you believe this shit? Hey guys, did, did you happen to hear that other huge pop song last year that sampled this one? And, and you, know what, you know what pisses me off the most? Not the using of the sample itself, but the wasted potential! I'm Blue by Eiffel 65 is a song that, for years, the joke has been, gee, what is that mess of syllables he's saying right after the I'm Blue part? An idea that's prompted people to add in their own lyrics for what those vocals sound like to them when they sing it. And 20 years on, here we have the first two songs in a row that sample that iconic melody, and they both just fucking shit the bed. I'm good and I'm feeling alright, that fucking redundant ass waste of a line. And Uzi doesn't even fucking try. And I wouldn't mind that if he was saying something cool, but he's not. The most bare attempt at wordplay here is the simple idea that two fashion brands both have the word heart in them, I guess. Fucking dull as dishwater. Look, I don't know if you've heard it, but Lil Wayne and 2 Chainz did a mixtape together a couple of years ago, and on it, they sampled 90s EDM jazz song Scatman. But they didn't just have the melody play in a loop the whole time. For the hook, Wayne flips the sound of what that hook sounds like to insert new words into it virtually every time. Okay. 
Now, that's got a lot of my Wayne and 2 Chains, a song you gotta check out just because it's fun. But listen to the delivery here. Something just doesn't sound right about it. You can tell he wrote these lines before he heard the beat, and so he's awkwardly trying to make the words fit around it. And of course, we gotta talk about this line. I mean, it's one of the more clever lyrics, so I'll give her that at least. That said, I feel like the month where the former president is now facing treason charges for showing off government secrets to friends at dinner parties is maybe not the best time to affiliate your name with theirs. Now, she's done this sort of edgelord wink nod to conservatives before, and to be clear, just saying a witty play on words about something political doesn't automatically mean you endorse it. But honestly, it wouldn't surprise me in the least that the rich celebrity who wants to stay rich is voting for the one side of the political aisle that doesn't even pretend to help poor people. And as much as we want to sweep the idea of a black person down with Trump under the rug, we did catch her in fucking 4K spreading lies about vaccines, so it's not exactly out of the realm of possibility. I got a Republican well, that actually explains a lot. Oh, oh, this is this is part of the hook, isn't it? Made my ass great again, MAGA. Also, also, isn't it pronounced MAGA, not MAGA? MAGA sounds like the word some anime nerd would correct you on, like, ugh. Actually, that's how it's originally pronounced in the source material. And I know she just did it to force the rhyme with doctor, but still, it sounds like she's failing at trying to be hashtag relatable around the actual poor people who voted for Trump, uh, but she doesn't know how to keep up the facade. Like, oh, yes, happy mega to you too, fellow working class people. Then, after all that meandering nonsense that was somehow only just the hook, we finally get to verse one. And it's about a Chinese girl that he randomly met in New York. I mean, it Okay. And seriously, that's it. It's just four lines about randomly meeting a Chinese fashion designer, then it's Nikki's verse. And you hear the awkward way he keeps delivering these lines? I met her at Dover Street Market. Good. I, like, why does he keep singing it like that? Hey, yo, even if my name was Natalie Nunny, but just do couldn't check me. So, uh, I, don't, I don't really watch trash reality TV like that, so, so this name didn't really register with me. But apparently she's from a reality show called The Bad Girls Club, and I, I'm assuming I'm not missing much. I figure it's one of those shows where everyone yells at each other till commercial break, but no one really wins anything. Oh, and are we spelling words and rap songs again? Like, n nobody ever liked that. Can, can we all agree to that? No one ever enjoys the experience of hearing a rap verse and then having to go, wait, wait, wait what are they spelling? Oh, oh competition. Oh, okay. okay. Like, like, that's not rewarding. And boy, does shit feel like we need to rev up the motor on this track about halfway through a verse. It basically stops cold in the middle of it for this part. I was really in the field with Carla girl, and I was helping campaign. Like, wh why are we getting so weirdly serious over this person all of a sudden? I mean, uh, no disrespect to the people he was personally important to, but wh why is there an in-memoriam section in this rap song about fashion and buying clothes? Oh, but the Virgil Abloh guy who also died recently, but a lot of people in the hip-hop community actually knew about? What, he doesn't get a reverent moment? Hey, uh... Nikki need to be rebooted or something? Okay, but for real, guys, I understand this industry is so lazy the big stars can't be fucking bothered to actually come down to the studio, but can you at least check the Nicki Minaj voice replicator tracks didn't glitch out before you released it? That said, a robot Nicki Minaj still has leagues more riz than Uzi Vert over here. At least the Nicki bot is actually giving us punchlines, putting some kind of effort in. All Uzi's talking about is just interchangeable fashion brag bars. These rappers can't dress yet, they just be hating. Interestingly enough, this is probably the most memorable line from him in the whole song. Stop wearing Capitol cause they got basic. I still wear Capitol, Uzi stop faking. After all this brand name talk to prove he's the fashion guru apparent, only to follow it up with, But I don't wear that Capitol brand cause that brand is for basic bitches now. Except that, except I still wear it cause I, cause I still kinda like it. Like, bro, how you gonna claim the cool guy while you're self-reporting your basic bitchery? Overall, I give this a 1 out of 5. This song's a hot, jumbled mess. And I'd say it's all about the hook with a song like this, but what's the catchy part supposed to be? I don't remember anything that stuck out. The shit's so rambly, I'm honestly not sure where it begins and ends. And you know, I wouldn't be annoyed with it if there was some real flavor to how these verses came out. But the track doesn't engage you enough for you to even want to care about the carousel of French and Italian names they keep trotting out. Because I don't get that they appreciate the designs or the fits. It's just about blinding you with how many different brands they can afford. To make you think they've got the distinguished cool of a Seal or a Tyson Beckford. But it's given more Zoolander to me. Well, that's the episode. 
Leave a like if you like because it helps. Comment if you have something to say because it helps even more. And hit the subscribe button afterwards because that's what helps the most. And if you want to support the show, of course, that's Kofi.com slash Rap Critic for one-time donations and Patreon.com slash Rap Critic for ongoing donations, where you can see episodes early and join the RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. And of course, remember, if you join that Patreon, you get all Kofi requests half off. And until next time, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but I don't have to like your song. Peace. I hate guys. I love women.